As you might know, I'm interested in all things laughter and how it affects our physical health, our mental health and our overall well-being. But I didn't know too much about how our bodies behave when we laugh. So I thought I'd put on my science hat and see what I could find out and just what happens when we laugh. I'm Pete Can, The Laughter Man, and my aim in life is to get people like you to become healthier, happier, and even wealthier through laughter. And I've had to go to some dark places in my life before I discovered the cure that I wasn't even looking for, laughter. Not every species on the planet has the capacity to chuckle. Chimpanzees can. Scientists have even produced what sound like titters from rats by tickling them. But it's human beings and other primates who are considered to be the only one capable of responding to something they find humorous with a giggle. Although it's a sign of having a fine old time, a good laugh is one of the most complicated things our bodies produce. And here's why. It all starts in the brain. We don't choose to laugh. Even if we've paid to watch live stand-up from a favourite comedian, we're actually taking a gamble. If we laugh at a joke during the show, it's involuntary based on how our brain processes what we see and hear. Science can't agree on what makes us laugh, but it's thought that the frontal lobe at the very front of the brain, which determines our emotional responses, plays a part, along with the limbic system. The frontal lobe is split into two halves, the left and the right. The left is the practical side and works out if the sounds and images we're experiencing are a joke or not. The right side is the creative half and determines if we actually find the joke or situation funny or not. The frontal lobe cannot start our laughter off though. That's up to the limbic system, located beneath the cerebral cortex. The limbic system handles basic emotions such as fear, anger, pleasure. And once it gets the message from the frontal lobe that we need to laugh at something, it sends another message out, which sets the physical process of laughter in motion. So who would have thought a laugh could be so complicated? It can help you lose weight a bit, Laughing is a mini workout. One study has found that 10 or 15 minutes of laughter can burn up to 10 to 40 additional calories each day. Even this small amount helps lead to good health. While it may not rival the latest diet fad, a good giggle does have an extraordinary effect on the entire body. It causes 15 facial muscles to contract, changing our expressions. You'll also use muscles in your arms, legs and torso. The most noticeable effect comes from the stimulation of the zygomatic muscle, the one responsible for moving your upper lip into a grin. Be warned though, the contraction of muscles in the abdomen when you're chortling can have an unexpected effect on the bladder. The relaxed feeling after a bout of laughter is comparable to the one felt after a good workout. Any tension in your muscles is lost in endorphins. The chemicals which give you that warm fuzzy feeling are released into your brain. So who would have known laughter could help you lose weight? If this is something you're interested in finding out more about, drop me a comment below. Okay, onwards and upwards. It boosts your overall health. Who'd have thought that watching your favorite sitcom could make you healthier? Surprisingly, it can. When we laugh, our immune system is strengthened. Laughter also increases our production of antibodies, the cells which fight off disease. This really is healing through laughter. A study in 1979 supported a theory that people with a strong sense of humour were less prone to becoming anxious or depressed. It has social significance. You may think that roaring at your best mate's latest jokes is nothing more than a bit of fun, but what you're doing is an important social activity. Studies have shown how a gang of pals or relatives having a laugh together makes them feel safer and strengthens their shared bond. And there is even scientific evidence to suggest that laughter really is contagious. We are more likely to laugh if somebody else is already laughing. That's why laughter tracks are placed in TV sitcoms, to make us chuckle along with the unseen audience. And importantly, laughter is a social signifier. It underlines conversation intended to be warm and inclusive. Without it, our world would be a lot less friendly and we may struggle to feel safe. I've got one more thing to tell you and I think you'll find it really interesting. I've always get asked this question, so I thought I'd cover it today. If you'd like today's video, why not consider subscribing to my channel? I've got loads of information about many positive benefits of laughter and how it can make you healthier, happier and even wealthier. So I often get asked, can we make ourselves laugh? And the answer is, <laughs> we certainly can make ourselves laugh, but this can be quite hard to do on your own. However, with a group of like-minded people, it's really quite easy to force yourself to laugh. 
Once you're in the flow of laughter, your body is unable to distinguish between true laughter and laughter you're forcing your body to do. So basically, you can get all the amazing positivity of laughter by faking it. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> laughter wellness isn't really worth its weight in comedy gold. If you think you can't laugh, just remember, if P can, you can. I'll see you next time. <laughs> this is so <laughs>